सो दैट्स वाई दिस प्रोटो वर्क मेक्स इट फाइव एक्स फास्टर दैन जैसा आई एम प्लानिंग टू क्रिएट ए प्रैक्टिकल वीडियो ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटिंग टू सर्विसेज टू माइक्रो सर्विसेज एंड एस्टेब्लिशिंग ए कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन डेम एंड द डेटा एक्सचेंज एंड रिक्वेस्ट रेस्पॉन्स साइकिल बिटवीन डेम यूजिंग जी आर पी सी सो अंडरस्टैंडिंग द स्ट्रेंथ एंड लिमिटेशन ऑफ बोथ द ऑल द थ्री प्रोटोकॉल्स इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इज एसेंशियल फॉर बिल्डिंग इफेक्टिव सिस्टम इफेक्टिव आर्किटेक्चर Hey everyone welcome back to the channel so today we are going to start the third section of our rgv system design playlist that is networking and communication protocols and in the first video of this section number 3 we are going to discuss about http web sockets and grpc so we have already covered these two sections in our rgv system design playlist uh, and this playlist is meant for you know covering all the basic concepts of system design in a easiest way and the most lucid way possible manner okay so keep an eye on this playlist okay so let's start with the today's topic that is http versus web sockets versus grpc so understanding this concept will help you make informed decision when designing the systems and you will be able to understand which protocol to use when so let's start with the first one that is the basic fundamental one that is the http so http or hypertext transfer protocol this is the foundation of data communication across the web which follows a request response cycle request response model it follows the client which is usually a browser or you know mobile application it sends a request to the server and the server responds back with a response so there are typically three uh, version of http http1 http2 http3 maybe we'll discuss about this in a separate video it will require a detailed discussion on these topics for now let's just understand there are three version exist now what are the pros of http now http is simple and widely supported across various platforms it is stateless one so it, it's stateless architecture or stateless nature makes it easy to scale actually it is ideal for traditional web, web application and or restful apis so there are some cons of http also basically each request typically requires a new connection which can be inefficient right basically in the http one whenever you want to interact with a server or whenever your client wants to interact with the server it opens a new tcp connection which is an overhead basically that was in http one but later on on http2 that was not the case with a single connection you could pass a stream of messages n number of messages so this http is not you know well suited for a real time communication due to this latency of and latency and overhead of acquiring a tcp connection before proceeding with the communication if there is frequent interaction in your entire application between client and service http can be a resource intensive uh, protocol to follow so that's how that that's about http next we have is about the web sockets now web sockets is designed for real time and two way communication as you can see here between the client and server so unlike http web sockets basically establish a persistent connection which allows both the parties to send messages independently so some of the pros of web sockets are you know it enables a uh, it enables a low latency communication due to its persistent connection nature between client and server and it is ideal for applications like chat systems live streaming or live score update or live sports update and collaborative tools this uh protocol is a great tool to use so web socket basically reduces the overhead as compared to your http technique like uh, polling polling comes with a little bit of overhead but web socket can you know overcome that but there are again scenarios like when to go for polling and when to go for web sockets both have their own set of use cases that is beyond the scope of this video right now to discuss so some of the cons of web sockets are uh web sockets requires careful management of connections and resources so it is not the best choice for simple request response application if you have just plain uh, client and server application where a client request some resources or data from the server you should not use web sockets ideally so this persistent connection that we create that could be you know become a complex thing to handle when uh, we are going for scaling so building for a large scale application web socket may not be the ideal situation to go for so next and final thing which is the main attraction or the main point of this video it's about the grpc so let's explore grpc or google remote procedural call so grpc was a framework developed by google it is built on top of rpc so before understanding about grpc we have to understand what you what do we mean by rpc first okay so rpc or remote procedural call just like you know making a function call uh, but in a function call we call a function uh, present in the same uh, machine or same uh, code base locally right it's a local call basically when you do a function call it's a local call but in rpc it's like you know as if you are calling a function defined which is defined in this service let's say there is a function defined in payment service which needs to be called by order service in that case and both of them are running in two different machines so in this case we will typically go for a rpc so which will basically nothing but a remote function call or remote procedural call so that's about the 
RPC. Now gRPC is Google's implementation of RPC as we discussed with some added features which makes it you know a high performance framework for efficient communication between two services and focusing mostly on the two microservices not client and uh, uh, server just like the two earlier uh, slides why I will I'll come to that so before that let's just understand how gRPC works basically so gRPC utilizes protocol buffers or pro protobufs for compact efficient data serialization now what does that mean so in protobuf we define the contracts or the schema of the message like this as you can see here and then the protobuf basically is, it is compiled or serialized into binary form like this uh, unlike a json object we mention it using proto class and it is then serialized into binary form i have discussed in detail about the protobufs in a separate video i'll link that video in the description box you can check that in the description box okay so as protobuf serializes the data using binary encoding like this so this makes itself 5x faster than json serialization and it is strongly typed i mean for each field we define types like what is the type of the field whether it's string integer list all those things which is not in the case of json right json is a very loosely coupled or loosely typed uh, data serial serialization and deserialization tool so that's why this protobuf makes it 5x faster than json so protobuf has a another benefit of having protobuf is protobuf has a large community support and language support over almost all the programming languages that we have out there node.js go java python .NET, a lot of c c++ we have all the programming language clients so those clients help the proto class definition as you can see here to be converted to data access class for that particular language and those using those those data access class the services let's say this is written in go right this payment service is written in go and this is let's say written in java so using the, the clients of protobuf protobuf clients this uh, serialized data can be converted into data access class so that the particular microservice can access the data actual data present inside it the next benefit of protobuf is it is built on http2 http2 has a uh, bigger advantage http2 allows multiple requests and responses over a single connection only unlike http1 where you need to make a new tcp connection for each request and response cycle in http2 you can re reuse or the reutilize the same tcp connection for multiple request response cycle or you can pass a multiple streams of messages over a single tcp connection using http that is http2 that is possible as you can see here with this using the same single error or the single connection i can pass multiple streams these are the streams of messages the circles that you see this is one of the major benefit of http2 and it is used in uh, grpc uh, protocol actually so some of the key feature of grpc is it's completely language agnostic that means it supports multiple programming languages which facilitates you know cross language communication even if this is written in java this is written in go grpc will work as it is without any detail uh, without any significant modification in existing code base or the communication protocol does not change i am planning to create a practical video of implementing two services two microservices and um, establishing a communication between them and the data exchange and request response uh, cycle between them using grpc so that will be my next video so stay tuned for that we will have a practical application use case of uh, understanding grpc along with protobuf we'll do that that will be a very interesting use case to learn so the next benefit of uh, grpc is its streaming soft support grpc basically handles various streaming scenarios including both the single and bidirectional streams also grpc comes with pre-built um, mechanisms for secure transmission or secure communications and binary serial serialization and multiplexing as you saw here it enhances the performance drastically as compared to json serialized object so these are some of the benefits of grpc now let's discuss about some of the pros of grpc so one pros is obviously high performance due to efficient data serialization and transport as you can see here using binary serialization the data transport becomes way faster than json so it's strongly typed every field is strongly typed it's a strongly typed contract which reduces errors in communication grpc is scalable and suitable for complex microservices based architecture that is for sure but grpc also has some kind of cons uh, it is more complex to implement uh, as compared to restful apis which is generally based on the restful apis so there is limited direct support to use it in the typical client server uh, interaction or the typical web browser to server interaction so it has some tools or libraries available there but it is still not you know mature enough to be used in the uh, client server architecture so it may require additional proxies for web integration so that's why this is heavily used nowadays in the my intra microservices based communication so the another cons is debugging can be challenging due to binary data streams okay 
So which protocol should you choose then? So the first one is the HTTP. So HTTP is best suitable for traditional web application or RESTful services and for scenarios where simplicity is the key, that's for sure. Right? The next protocol we have is the WebSocket. So it is ideal for real-time applications requiring low latency, two-way communication such as chat application or live updates. Finally, the gRPC. gRPC is suited for high-performance scalable systems, especially in microservices architecture interaction where efficient inter-service inter communication is the key and it is a crucial component for your architecture. So understanding the strengths and limitations of both the all the three protocols is quite important and it is essential for building effective system effective architecture so each sub different purposes so if you found this video helpful please drop a like let's target for 50 likes for this video and please subscribe to my channel i am targeting to reach 3000 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting i will request you to keep an eye on this rgb system design playlist i am going to cover all the nine sections as you can see here we are going to cover all the nine sections in the detailed manner with all the examples live real examples will cover all the concepts okay so keep an eye on this rgb system design playlist so you can always search RGB system design playlist uh, in the YouTube and you will land on this playlist and you can, then you can explore this uh, playlist and its contents. Okay. So thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.